Satan has ability to suggest doubts and to devise objections to the point of testimony that God sends. And many think it a virtue, a mark of intelligence in them, to be unbelieving and to question and quibble that sometimes makes our brethren stumble. Those who desire to doubt will have plenty of room. God does not propose to remove all occasion for unbelief. He gives one, He gives evidence which must be carefully investigated with a humble mind and a teachable spirit. And all should decide from the weight of evidence. Many things are now registered as sins in the book of heaven, which men do not go see. Why? Because our standards are too low. And we are in an era where in what we thought is right, is right for us. Selfishness and covetousness are at the foundation for all things. And yet many are not convicted of the scene of selfishness. Because it is a part of their nature, and they do not listen to the reproving of the Holy Spirit. They judge their brethren, thinking to remove a boat from their brother's eye, when they have a beam in their own eye, which must be removed before they can see clearly the extract of from their brother's eye. The work of correcting our fellow men, and especially of correcting our brethren in the faith, is a word that requires wisdom from God. I know. Um, I'm not a Is it very relevant today that we are being judged by God? And sometimes we are not aware, we are not aware that we are like that. It is the method that the Holy Spirit takes first to convince and then to comfort. The Spirit convinces of the fact of sin of the fault of sin, of the folly of sin, of the filth of sin, and that by it we are became, become hateful to God, and the fountain of sin, the corrupt nature, and lastly of the fruit of sin, that the other of is death. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to convict us about sin. And if we do not see now how heavy sin is, we must plead more for the Holy Spirit to convict us of what sin is. That the Holy Spirit proves that all the world is guilty before God. That's why the Beatitudes would first say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God. Because when you are poor in the spirit, you're poor, you're a beggar, you're lacking. And that's the time you're longing for God. That's the time you're longing for the Savior. Because you have seen that you're lacking. It is the Holy Spirit that convinces the sin and expels it from the soul by the consent of the human nature. The Holy Spirit wants to work in our life. He doesn't leave you being convicted of sin, but He wants you to expel those sins in your life if you will allow it. If we will allow it. And so our comfort is also found with a message for the loud scene at church. Revelation 3, verse 19 says, As many as I love, God loves us so much. I rebuke and chase. Therefore, he repents for them. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now we go to the second one. The Holy Spirit will convince the world of God's righteousness. Last time, last May, we had a Bible conference entitled The Word God's Righteousness. The pastors, all the pastors are there studying about God's righteousness. If only every member of the church could also hear those messages, then probably we could 
grasp the totality of the righteousness of God. And so why the Holy Spirit needs to convince the world of today of God's righteousness? Because Revelation 3 verse 17 says they are proclaiming, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. Meaning they are self-confident, self-sufficient, and even self-righteous. They're wearing their own righteousness. We are wearing our own clothes. And our clothes are filled to rags. But sometimes we get even nothing. And so the people of God are represented in the message of the loudest again as in a position of honor and security. They are at peace, delivering themselves to be in an exalted condition of spiritual attainment. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with good and am need of nothing. And so the Holy Spirit will convince the world of God's righteousness. And John 16, verse 10 says, Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. What does it mean when he said, or Jesus Christ said that there? Elijah White says of righteousness, because I go to my father and he see me no more. From the time he ascended to his father, what? He has represented man as a surety and substitute. The father looks upon the son in the perfection of his character now. As one who has borne the penalty of sin and has wrought perfect righteousness for the repenting soul. And he is reconciled to all who believe in Christ as the one fully able to save from sin. And so Christ's righteousness or God's righteousness is now available for us because of Christ ascended to heaven. But the thing is, sometimes we're not grabbing the opportunity to have God's righteousness. We still hang on to our own righteousness. Christ's ascension proves the ransom was accepted and the righteousness finished to which believers were to be justified. And also our comfort is found in the message for the Lord is in Revelation 3 verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, try it in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white, raiment that thou mayest be gold. This gold, tried in the fire, is faith and love that God wants you to buy from him. And this white raiment that we call her is the righteousness of God. It is available for us, but sometimes it's us not wanting to avail it. Because what will happen if we wear God's righteousness? There will be nothing of us. Our self will be denied. And there will be a lot of sacrifices. And sometimes we should be out of our comfort zone. And also, I did the shame of the dead that is done up here. And anoint thy eyes with eye salt that thou mayest see. This eye salt is a gift of discernment for us to discern what is right and what is right. And so, this is our helpless. And lastly, the third one that the Holy Spirit will try to convince us is to convince the world of the coming judgment. Why judgment? Revelation 3, verse 16 and 16 says, They are not a hope nor hot, they are lukewarm. In other words, they are complacent, apathetic, and spiritually indifferent. Meaning they are just lax. What if, what if, these people would not hear about the coming judgment? Probably, most probably, they would stay complacent. 
They would stay apathetic. They would stay spiritually indifferent. John 16 verse 11 says, Judgment will come because the prince of this world has already been judged. Who is the prince of this world? It was Satan. And he was already judged. Brothers and sisters, when Christ was crucified on the cross, it's the end for him. The battle is 1-0. One, 1 for Jesus and 0 for Satan. And Satan knows it. That's why he's doing his best now to snatch you, to get you from Jesus. Because once you choose for him, once you decide for him, then it's one, one. One for Jesus and one for him. Do you like that? I hope not. And so the judgment will come because the prince of this world has already been judged. The Holy Spirit was to convince of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The unfallen world has watched the conflict and trial of the Son of God in behalf of humanity. They have seen the crooked working of him who was once had exalted of God, but who was expelled from heaven with a large number of angels, who has made this world the stage of his action, the field of his controversy against God. In heaven, he complained against the law of God, declaring it unnecessary and arbitrary. And even right now, he is convincing us that the law of God is unnecessary and arbitrary. He is represented the Lord of Abba and the High Commander of Heaven. He claimed that he was above law and maintained that Christ was upon his side. But he has fully manifested that the principles he advocated were given and injurious. It has been proved that the law of the Lord, Jesus Christ, has proved that the, Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great peace to the Lord. This conviction of the Holy Spirit about the judgment to come is a warning for us. Then we also, like Satan, like the prince of this world, will be judged someday. But are we ready? Are we prepared to meet the judgment day? Remember, the law of the Lord is perfect. His standard is high. Sometimes the things we're doing are sin, but we do not call it sin. But when we search more of God in the scripture, we will realize that it's sin. But then there is a comfort for us. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, for the loud to see church or a church today, to him that overcome it, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And I am sat down with my father in his throne. What a hope and a joy. That as Jesus Christ was overcome, we also could overcome. And also our comfort is coming from the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 3, verse 23 says, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says and the church. This message to the seven churches are indeed also the message of the Holy Spirit to us. The Holy Spirit wants to get involved in our lives today. Because He wants to do something in our hearts, in our lives today. Which is
to convict us of sin, of God's righteousness, and the coming judgment. And to those who are approved by the Spirit of God, shall not rise up against the humble instrument. It is done. Sometimes we do not recognize the Holy Spirit as a God. But I want you to remember that He is God. And not an mere mortal who has spoken to save them from the wind. Those who despise the warning will be left in blindness to become self-deceived. But those who heed it and didn't be told about the work of separating their sins from them in order to have the needed graces will be opening the door of their hearts that the dear Savior may come in and dwell with them. The result of this conviction or coming from the Holy Spirit is only twofold. When men embrace it, accept it, chasing it this thing, they are saved by it. If men reject it, and in the rejection part of their heart, they are thus condemned by it. The Holy Spirit today is working. Now. If we will accept it, the chastening discipline, then we could be saved. And if not, we are left again. Once again, the Holy Spirit is offering to us His work. John 16, verse 8. Let us once again be all together. Ready to go. And when he comes, he will convince the world of the sea and of God's righteousness and of coming judgment. I would not make any other appeal for me this morning, but for you to have a moment of prayer to God. So whatever the Holy Spirit is convicting you right now, May you speak to God in the right hand. But before that, let me remind you that there will be a weekend prayer now for the whole day. That is called the day in person. And this is your day for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our university. This will include every faculty, every student, every one of us here in the And I hope you will get involved. And so I invite the one playing to play the music as we come to God. 